wide open. <laughs> uh, welcome back. I'm on a bit of a K-car kick lately and I am not complaining. Guys, this is the 1992 Honda Acti van. It's a three-cylinder mid-engine K-car. It says 12 valve 660 on the back. I think technically it's 656 cc, but it's naturally aspirated. So you don't get the kick out of this that you do in say the Jimny or the AZ1. It's only got about 38 horsepower. It's rear wheel drive, not all wheel drive, and it tops out at 71 miles per hour. So if you are looking for something to do uh, highway driving as well, this is not for you. But if you've just got to go deliver the kids or the kegs or whatever you're trying to move around town, this is perfect. So there's a lot of quirky things on this vehicle. Number one, you notice that you sit directly over the front wheels. So when you get in, you look down, you're sitting on top of the suspension. So God forbid a strut tower breaks and comes up through the seat because that would not be very pleasant. And everything is exposed down here. So you can see your steering column between your clutch and brake pedals and your throttle right here is this little guy. Everything is very box truck like. And they did make this as a pickup as well. Uh, but this is the van. Great little five-speed gearbox, which goes all the way to the rear. Make sure this doesn't go anywhere, although the e-brake does work well. And under here, you'll notice a flare. Yes, a Honda flare in case you break down in your Acti, which I doubt will happen. It's probably pretty reliable. Getting out actually is kind of funny because you've got to reach over these front wheels. That is your fuel filler cap. Around this side, you'll find another filler cap. That is for your oil. So if you remember, there was a year of the 911 that they used uh, a, an oil cap like that where you could fill the oil from the exterior of the car. They stopped doing it mostly because I think Americans were uh, putting gas in there. But yeah, if you need to add oil, there you go. And you got to remember it's mid-engine. That's all under here. But there's so much ground clearance on this thing that it actually probably wouldn't be too bad to work on. And I think you can just do oil changes and stuff without even putting it on jacks. You can just jump right under there. And when you open the rear hatch, it's like just a tube. The, the, the walls of this are very thin. So you've got all of this space and uh, really no insulation to hide you from the world. Special thanks to Ransom Garage for letting me play with this today because I, I where else would I get one? Uh, all right, so you've got two sides with the sliding van doors. Under here, I hope you can see that, there is actually a spare tire under there. And this is where you would fill your washer fluid. These seats fold down. There are no seat belts. I don't know that there ever were. I don't know if they're supposed to be. Um, but then you've got this weird bar which I'm not going to play with too much, but it's almost as if it's like a roller coaster where you'd put it down over yourself. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of unexplained things, but roll down windows back here as well. Giant glass. They only roll down that far, but it's very Honda in here. If you've, if your parents, or I guess if you're younger, your grandparents ever had like an early nineties Accord, this is the dashboard. This is what you're looking at. It's very familiar. And the ceilings are just super tall. I'm 5'9", 5'10", and I would probably have to be seven feet tall to feel remotely cramped in here. So I think everybody can probably drive the Acti. The owner put on this cool roof rack and then added these great metal side plates kind of adds to the ambiance of the car. Definitely ready to pull up to the car show. And the Mugen wheels, so cool. But enough about that. Let's take it for a ride. It's the box truck of my dreams. All 38 raging horsepower and all that exhaust comes out that little pea shooter of a tailpipe. Tons of visibility. If nothing else, you get visibility. And this is maybe the best little gearbox I could imagine. This shifter is fantastic. It's so accurate. I'm never questioning where I am. This is like, if you want to teach somebody how to drive right-hand drive in a stick, 
I can't think of a better thing than the Acti. You're gonna have to leave room for traffic because like I said, you've got 38 horsepower. You're not getting up to speed very quick, even if it's only 30 miles per hour. All about patience. You're not rushing the Acti. And it is a little bit like driving a bus because the, the steering wheel is kind of flat. You turn it side to side, there's definitely a little body roll and everything's happening right beneath you. So when you hit a bump, it's coming up right through the seat. But you can tell I'm doing about 40 miles per hour right now at 3,500 RPM. So that's about 65 kilometers an hour. So yeah, not a highway vehicle. I think if you had to run one exit on a highway, you could maybe do it with your hazards on in the right lane, <laughs> but I would not recommend it. It does have air conditioning as well. I've been told, oh cool, it has a little light up Honda button for the AC, that's wonderful. I've been told it's just enough to keep you cool, but it won't necessarily run well at idle. So if you are driving, it'll puff enough cold air to, uh, to make sure that you're not sweating bullets in here. That's wide open throttle up the hill. You know, when you drive like a 911 Turbo S, and I can't believe I'm making this comparison right now, but it's so wide that when you drive on back roads, you don't have much room to really use the road. But in something little like this, you can actually kind of take the outside and work your way into an apex, which is very funny. You'll not be winning any races in the Acti, but you'll climb the hill with a smile. I can't imagine this in like legitimate hills in Japan, especially without a turbo, because as elevation changes, you're getting less uh, dense air, which means that this thing is going to really struggle in altitude. Hello, officer. These roads are very strange because they'll have like a stop sign in one direction. So you'll see everybody stopping at a stop sign and it feels like you should also be stopping, but you don't need to. If I had like a cyclist team and we needed a support vehicle, this is the thing. What do you think of the Acti? Mountain road, that sounds like a plan. Such a smooth little engine too. I mean, granted, it doesn't want to like sit high up in the rows. Maybe it would. I, I, it just doesn't sound to me necessary. But I am very much enjoying myself here. And the horn is just wonderful. <laughs> Brakes are so positive, I actually just needed to reach over and make sure that all my stuff didn't just fall. The brakes are fantastic. Like, this is a drivable thing. That's the big shock about K-cars for me, is that they look like go-karts, they look like toys, they look like something that you wouldn't actually want to drive. They're just cute. But the reality is these are so well made and they're so easy to drive and they're so confident on the road that honestly, now it's like all I want to drive. and it's really helping me hone my right-hand drive shifting skills. What a road. Who knew a road named Mountain Road would be a good road to drive on? Ha! Such an accurate gearbox. That's what I'm actually most shocked about in this car is that it's, it, it, it's not like the Jimny where, you know, the Jimny you could find where you were but it was more like a truck. This is just like driving in a cord. It's so easy, although they look like like little teeny toy cars, they are, <laughs> they aren't, like, they are designed with a human being in mind, not just a child. Wide open. <laughs> uh, 
You got to work for it, man. Rear-wheel drive mid-engine. We're driving a sports car. This suspension is great. I mean, granted, I am on a, a, a very well-paved road, but it's not its not shattering my teeth over the bumps either. You'd think that something this little would just really wreck you, but it's not. The best thing about K-cars, I think, is that you go into them with all these preconceived notions of what it's going to be, for better or worse, and you always come away just psyched, like that was so much more awesome than you could have imagined. And like, imagine if I'm just out here bombing these roads and a cop pulls me over. Is he really gonna be mad that I was driving this a little fast? I don't know. I think he'd be impressed. You do need to be very aware of other traffic though, because like you don't want to get hit in a K car. Um, that would be fairly catastrophic. Look at this too. Now I can I can get right up close. Parking this thing in the city would be so easy because the flat nose. Love this gearbox. I've never felt more confident in a right-hand drive manual car than in this. We really all just need K cars. You know, if you really wanna reduce emissions in the world, don't don't go crazy with all of your all of your hybrids because everyone gets so angry and offended at Priuses and those things. I think I think K cars are the answer. Get Americans to drive 660 cc. What could be more opposite than that? See, we don't need we don't need Hellcats. We need Acties. Who am I kidding? I still love power. Don't do it. I do have the brakes. I do have the brakes if you did it, but don't do it. Thank you. One thing that I'll say about K-Cars is that they belong in great collections. I see so many youtube -y, like, oh, I saw the greatest garage in the world, and all it is is a new 488 Pista with custom paint, a new GT3 uh, or GT2 RS with custom interior. Everyone's just out buying the latest and greatest. I. As much as those cars are great, and they're engineering marvels, and they are fantastic, I think that a good, well-rounded garage has to have a micro car, has to have K cars. It has to show that you're in it for more than just the flashy thrills of the latest and greatest. Like, this is driving pleasure. This is joyful. And if you don't find joy in some of these little cars, then are you really a car person? I don't know. I feel like you have to like everything. You know, you've got to have an eclectic variety because if you handed me a little Messerschmitt with the canopy three-wheeler, I would have such a great time. And at the same time, I also would love to drive, you know, like a 57 Chevy. I mean, how can you not love a Bel Air? So overall, look, K cars, these are so much fun. Maybe if you live on really, really, really rough roads and you've got to use highways to get around, this may not be the option for you. Um, but I do think that if you've got a collection and you've got room for a little K car, you, you have to have one. They're fantastic. So thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I hope you're enjoying the little K car series we're doing. We're gonna go get a couple more. Don't forget to respect the drive and I'll see you in the next one. I also wanna give special thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this content possible. Your contributions of a dollar, $10, $15 a month, really help make this happen. And of course, thank you to Ransom Garage for letting me drive their Acti. And I think I got a couple more in the works with them. My goodness, you guys really know how to spread the joy.